Kia ora everyone. Um, I'm just going to do a tutorial on some transformation components within Rhino and this will help you develop your thinking parametrically and to, to allow you to modify and transform some of the structures or geometry that you're modeling. Um, I've got just a, a simple sort of script here that's uh, showing some other ways of modeling it and then we're going to start with some transforms transformations on that model um, but you can see uh, here the way that um, starting to take some care in how I lay things out and uh, that we can then transform pieces so um, we'll just zoom into into the into the model a little bit so here you can see we've started with a point so going back to those basics from the previous examples we've got a point um, in this case we're going to make a, a, a polygon let's just turn on this so we can see what I'm dealing with here this is a plugin called bifocals um, that if you're interested in having that you can download from a web website called uh, food for Rhino right back to the main sort of focus of this video so we've got this polygon so we can see in here there's a great uh, little tool up in the top right hand corner that allows us to change how we display things so if we click that whatever we've selected in the of the graph in the canvas allows us to to see it so I, as we move through you can see um, we went from this polygon through to here so in this case I've got a four-sided I know some of you wanted three-sided uh, shapes but this is just sort of showing you a way of doing it and it's based on the center of that um, plane in this case uh, and then it, it pulls it out um, and then what I've done is created uh, a solid difference between the two curves so that we end up with a wall thickness um, and then I've extruded that up so you can see now we've got this extrude what I have noticed so if we come back to over here and set a top view that you can see that it's on a 45 degree angle to our X and Y and that can be a little bit uh, more difficult to work with when it's like that so rather than sort of one way of, of tweaking that is to use uh, a transformation component so if we come up to the top here we've got transform and click on that we've got a whole lot here and there's one called Euclidean uh, uh, transforms so if we click on that there's a whole lot in here so there's one uh, just rotate and there's some other ones so you can rotate and, and three rotate in 3d if you need to um, but we're just going to work with the rotate so if we pull that out um, uh, we've got nothing associated with it so I'll just uncheck that so you can start to see the different elements that I would created before to get to this piece um, I want to rotate this extrusion so here is the original one and I want to rotate it so we can bring that geometry in and then it's got an angle so uh, by default gr Grasshopper works with radians which is another way of defining an angle so what we can do is we can right click and then we can on the 
left hand side so we can remember that the components are typically made of three sides so we've got the left hand side the input the process so to speak um, happening in the middle and then the output and if we right click on the different sides we get a different contextual menu so if we right click in the middle we get the bake um, uh, etc and the preview um, if we right click on the left hand side we get all these different things and in this case I've already done it but we wanted to select the um, input to be degrees so um, that's how I work and I'm sure most of you will work as well and then we can adjust that and you can see how now we can start to rotate that around so I'm just going to undo that so we're back to 45 degrees we can hide that view and we can hide this we don't need those um, and this and this so we've hidden all those uh, and then now we want to um, now when we look at the top view we can see we're in the right orientation the back to the rotate this plane is the in essence the center of where that rotates because I've left it um, where it is it's going to rotate around zero zero and that's where I've created it so um, if I wanted to rotate it around a different point so here um, let's just come back out to the top view and then zoom out a bit you can see we could rotate it around this point so if we take this point here which is not zero 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 and add that in it's now going to rotate around that as the the center so if we change that you can see how it's rotating around around that um, for the center so we want to undo that so back to 45 but we also want to not have that as our center because it moves it around so here the plane we can hold down control um, on a PC or command on a Mac and we can pull that back and get rid of that component so it jumps back to there right so that's the simple rotate and you could see there was a whole lot of other ones so let's delete that now I've got this and I want to do some other things to it um, so some other ones are these array tools and there's a whole lot um, here so we'll just start with a linear array so we can bring that in so we can pull the geometry in that we want and then we need a direction so um, let's give this some direction so type in a slider let's put in 12,000 so that and we need um, let's do it in the Y direction so if we type double click and type in Y so unit Y so I'm being a little bit rough just to help show where these go um, and if we zoom out you can see it's now made a whole lot of repeats of them and then we've got this count and then we've got the, the size so depending on where that is it gives the distance between them so you can see the higher I go I want them a little bit closer and then the count so um, let's just zoom in a bit more hopefully there we go um, pull this down so we can do another slider so I want uh, just a few so we'll start with five so I can feed that in and so there you can see we've changed the number and this one changes the the distance between so it allows us to control um, with a little bit more certainty what we want so that's one way of doing that uh, we can also bring in 
another array so um, that was linear array and that just goes off in a, in a direction um, but if we come back up to the transform menu uh, there's a curve array so if we bring that in so it's got geometry curve and count so I've already created a line here so I'm going to bring that in as my curve it doesn't have to be a curve it can be a line then our geometry so we can bring that in um, and then you can see uh, it's already started to put them out across that line and then we only want five um, and if we just extend that line uh, where's the point to this one so we want that to be a bit longer so let's just uh, what do we do double click and put another zero on there and then click all right that didn't seem to do it what happened Mm. It's not doing it. Hang on. Yeah, let's just change this. Let's change this up to. Okay, so now we can extend that out. Um, so our line is longer so we can control that curve and then we've got the count so we can decide how many we want. Um, for some of you that could be a really great way of, of creating multiples of the same thing. So we had just a direct array and then we had a curve so we can um, also if we adjust that line so we can have it um, up here going to the Y so you can see now that it's starting to have um, a different shape we can control that as well and how that operates relative to the line so we've um, gone over some basic uh, arrays there's some more complex ones up here so we have a box array so that's sort of imagine doing it in x y and z uh, we have a polar array so we, we can go around uh, in, a, in a curve so to speak or a rectangular array and that's like x and y so in a, in a grid and kaleidoscope which I don't know what that is but that may be something that some of you could use as well depending on what you're trying to do then uh, we've got a few other ones um, so we've gone over rotate an array um, I want to just go over um, another one which is scale so some of you have seen me uh, use that on discord so we can take an original piece of geometry pull it in and then just use a default center um, of zero zero in this case um, but you may need to give it a center and then we can put in a factor so let's go five uh, and then we can type that in so you can see now we've scaled that element up so rather than redraw it we can scale it up or down quite quickly um, it's only going to zero well zero won't work but um, it gives you a sense you could make it negative as well and that would go through or we could change the, the where are we where's our point here the point of scale and let's see what this does if we do that well I don't know where that went now and it's moved it out there so if we change this it's scaling relative to the, the the new center so has a different effect let's just uh, get rid of that and back to where we were so um, this is 
zoom extents so we can see what we're working with. So we've done scale. Um, let's see where else are we at. I'm going to stop uh, or we can have a look and there's a whole lot of other ones here and you may notice some of these are similar to the spatial verbs that you were using in the last project and in this project. Um, there's even some morph functions that may be useful. So um, this notion of twisted and um, uh, bend as well. Um, you don't need to get into those for this project. Um, another useful one um, that you may need is move to plane or move orient to a different position. And that's when you're taking one element and then sort of placing it in different parts over a surface or something. I won't get into that complexity, but it's good to sort of know that it's there. Uh, hopefully you found that helpful and to reach out if you have any questions.